Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, we like uh, unusual and different kind of vehicles on this website, and uh, it's not getting much more unusual than this. This is a 1921 American LaFrance fire truck, all uh, original, been restored, but not modified in any way. And uh, when you have unusual vehicles like this, they're usually owned by unusual people, like Gary Wales. You remember Gary? He's had a couple of crazy cars here. Remember this one? Or the two Rolls Royces? Well, this is his latest uh, deal. Gary, how are you? Jay, terrific. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank Gary you, Gary always has interesting <laughs> project. But you know, you usually come here with some unusual modified vehicle that's made into a flying something or other. This one's all original, isn't it? Absolutely unbelievable. I bought it from the second owner. Wow. And it's 90 three years old now wow. and uh it's absolutely amazing it's a 1921 yes sir american la france mm -hmm. okay triple combination so and it carries its own water it can pump from here you can pump uh, uh does everything okay so. so this was pretty much state-of-the-art for 1921 wasn't it absolutely it was state-of-the-art you know it's funny it's it's a nice size vehicle it's not crazy big so i mean we always think of fire trucks as being huge this is something you could actually put in your garage, and uh, it's it's got a nice presence to it. It's not overwhelming, but it, it's a huge motor, isn't it? It is a huge motor. How big is the engine? It's uh, at uh, uh, 14 liters, wow. 900 cubic inches. So it was, as we say, more than adequate. And this is a T head, correct? T head, yes, okay, sir. Okay, very good. Now, uh, I imagine 21 must have had electric start as standard, yes? The, yes, it did. Uh, you know. Trucks always lagged design-wise and engineering-wise about five or six years behind cars, whereas this looks more modern to me than 1921. Well, one thing you have to realize about trucks like this, fire trucks, when they went into the, the little towns and the burgs and, and the various locations, they cost, uh, on the average, of around $10,000 to $11,000, $12,000. Sure. You could buy a beautiful home, put a garage in with an automobile and probably furnish it for that yeah. much without any problem at all. So this was a major expenditures for these people. And so they really did do a heck of a lot to make them because this was the pride of their, their little town. Yeah. And you could see with, with all of the beautiful gold leafing and everything. And yeah. uh, they really did take care of them. This one was really taken care of. And this is all nickel. And this is, huh? this is a CH, was that Chapel Hill, California? Chapel, no, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, okay. oh wow. So it's back east. I, I, it's, it's amazing that it's so well preserved. Well, out here, most of the trucks, when they went out of service in the late 50s, they, would, they were bought up by ranchers, and they, they just left them out, and they just deteriorated, right. and the pieces were stolen off of them. Uh, this particular truck was restored by two gentlemen, uh, a fire chief from Chapel Hill and another one from Raleigh, North Carolina, who had a hobby of going out and restoring these various fire trucks for the local Companies, this was their personal truck. Wow, can we open so, it up? Let's see. If absolutely, see let me open like it up for you. Too. Sure. This is your, your exhaust manifold, okay. but your water pump, your generator, and your starter right. on the right. Starter here. Nice. And God, those are massive cylinders. As you can see, it's cast in pairs of two. Each piston's about like that, isn't Size it? of a two-pound coffee can. Oh, wow, okay. And on a piston, you know, like this, it's right. just an amazing piece. And what is it, three-speed or four-speed? Three-speed. But okay. with this, with a small sprocket, I find that unless you're pulling a horse out of a ditch, you don't need first. Just go right from second to third, and it's just no problem at all. Just pulling a horse through. out of a ditch. Is that well, fairly common? In, in those days, I think it was probably common. I can common. see the horses pulling the truck out of a ditch. No, in those days, it was so a truck. So when you put around the horse's neck and drag just pull him out. You come uh, out quick. If you've ever dragged a horse out of a ditch, <laughs> give me a call, because I, 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 I'm We need sorry. to know, really need put to Put that in the comment section. <laughs> you got a truck, and you're dragging a horse out of a ditch. <laughs> OK, you're trying to get that horse to talk or something. No brakes on the front. No, no. 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 So what was top speed for this? About 50 miles an hour? Yeah, if, if falling off a cliff, yeah, yeah, about 45. Yeah, with a horse, yeah. With a horse, yeah, and, you know, the, pulling it down. But yeah. about 40, 45, and uh, we drove it over from my place in Woodland Hills, probably 25 miles or so. It, it took a while. Yeah, it takes <laughs> but, a while to get here. You know, you spend a lot of time waving <coughs> at people, too, so. And it's chain drive, look at that. So that's why you're, that's what relegates your, your top end speed. Right. And what was the reason they 
With chain drive, I wonder. Just strength. Yeah. Strength. If you look at a drive shaft, people say nowadays people don't really know what you know what a chain drive is. That's one of the big comments right. that we get. And they say, is it strong? And yes, it's strong. And I've had people say, well, how come it has bicycle bicycle chains? Right. So, yeah. Hey, you can imagine you've got all that torque going in on both wheels at the same time, and it really does pull. You got all the hoses, and it, well, that's amazing. You got Everything all the that came with this truck is here. That was uh, one of the major things. Although there's one addition, and I'd like you to have that. What is that? And that's... Uh, oh, look at that. There you go. You, gotta... you can't drive a fire truck, Jay, without uh, having a fire helmet. Now, which so way now you go? got one. It goes this way, correct? Yep, that's there it. You go. There you are. Now, looks right, doesn't he? Maybe you got a horse in a ditch. You need that helmet. You, need you never know what's going to splash up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not get my chin out of this thing. Let's see the engine on the other side. Can you sure, open that's up? much more interesting. And this is not chrome. This is all nickel. Correct? It's all nickel plate. Yeah, yeah. Let's see the other side. <laughs> yes, sir. What do we have here? Is this a ah, battery box? That's a battery box. Okay, just, and 12 volt back in 20. 12 volt. 12 volt. <laughs> Everything was 12 volt in America uh, on fire trucks. Right, right. Because they needed to start. Actually, they recommended that you only hand crank these in, in, because the batteries at, in those days were really lousy. And so you'd maybe get one or two shots at starting yeah, it right yeah. up. So if you weren't on an emergency, it was always just give it a crank. Right. And you'll notice that one thing I'm going to point out on the front on here that they recommend, and I, you see, you'll see old fire trucks and you find that they're dented on the headlights. And that's because the guy would pull it and boom in it and pull them into right, it. Yeah. So now they, it's all one of these deals. Cool, cool. Well, let's uh, let's open this side up for let's you. Let's open Jay. this side. God, look at these massive cylinders. Just unbelievable. Here's your intake here. Magneto. You have a redundancy you know, Also have the distributor and the magneto because it's life-saving equipment. You needed to have uh, a backup unit on it, which it did. And you notice got all the original equipment still on the yeah, on the firewall, nice. which is shocking for me. Very cool. Nicely done. Okay. Let me drop that down. Oh, you got it. No problem. This just looks like a step ladder you get at a hardware store. Oh, not quite. You've got your little hooky poos right here, oh, yeah, so it doesn't that. fall down, slides yeah. up. Yeah. Somehow going to a fire with a wooden ladder seems to be. <laughs> I'll just put this wooden ladder against the burning building. That just seems like it would uh, a self defeating. Uh, yeah, a little. Yeah. What does this weigh? Any idea? I think it weighs around 10,000 pounds, wow. Jay. So it's five and tons. And it's pretty well loaded. And uh, it's a full complement of uh, hoses and, yeah. and, and all the other equipment that it has. And then your water tank. How many gallon tank? Do you know how many uh, gallons? It's about a 30 gallon uh, fuel tank and a 40 gallon uh, water tank. 40 gallons of water. So, <laughs> well, it's well, well, just for a small little fire. There you go. Okay. Well, you want to wash the horse off after you pull them oh, out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be all dirty. Sure. So you get your 40 gallons of water, you clean Ooh. the horse off, boom, you're ready to go. You got it. I think we're about ready to go for a ride. Let's look for a horse. I like that bell. That's a heck of a bell. What do you know about them? I don't know anything about them. Oh, come on. Ring a ding ding. You know why they sound like that? Because they throw five silver dollars in the melt when they do them. So that's why they have a very unique sound compared to any other of the fire trucks. You can tell 20 different bells when you hear American La France, you can tell that's what it is. It just, everybody smiles at you when yeah. you drive it, you know, they bring smiles. You know, it's hard to convey how torquey this engine is. You don't need to be giving any gas at all. It just lets your foot out, and it won't stall. It's just got so much power. Those big, giant pistons. There we go. Little different than the Bestiones, but still basically the same thing. Not much different. You know, the size of the brackets, a few things like that. <laughs> Other than that, it's wonderful.
You know, it's actually pretty docile. You got a center throttle, which is fairly common back in the day, clutch. You got a, a footrest here for the gas. Actually, very nice to drive. Braking is, uh, well, uh, challenging. It's very challenging. But uh, great, great machine. Let's take it back to the shop and we'll fire off the hose. We'll make it pump a little bit. Yeah, quiet. pump a little water. Let's put out a fire. <laughs> if there's no horses to pull out of a ditch, we'll find a fire. I'll never live that down. <laughs> intimidating at all to drive. I mean, the controls are very heavy, but not intimidating. It's all very linear. Everything does what it's supposed to do. You know why they're all right-hand drive in America on these? Right. That's so the guy, the driver, could put it right onto the fire hydrant. Yeah, oh, so they didn't okay. have to screw around with it. Let's see if she pumps some water. Want to pump it right here? Yeah. Andreas, would you pull the uh, hose out for him? Put this down, Jay, and this, what this does here is a safety feature right. so it, you can't get it into any other gear. Da -da -da. You're going. <laughs> that works good. Can we give you a little more power, Jay? We can get them. Now go. Gary, thanks a lot. My pleasure. Always a lot of fun when Gary comes by with these unique vehicles. <laughs> cool. See you guys next week.